Father in heaven, we bow before you on this, your preparation day, and we believe your presence is here with us. Could you please abide with us today? Would you please pour out your Holy Spirit upon us? Would you please give us Bible repentance, conversion, revival, and reformation? May we be prepared to serve you today as if today were the last day on this earth. Bless us now, we pray, with the forgiveness of our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this Midday Power Surge, special edition of Prophetic Insights. I want to begin by asking a few questions that are very pertinent to this solemn presentation. And brothers and sisters, today I want to give you a perspective that possibly you have never seen before. And right now, consider the definition for the word perspective. 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 A particular attitude toward or a particular way of regarding something. A point of view. Perspective. A viewpoint. Perspective. An interpretation. Perfect perspective just another angle and that same principle of perspective is found in psalm 119 and verse 96 where the bible says god's principles are broad in the scriptures isaiah 42 and verse 21 the bible says we should magnify the law as christ did we must make it honorable as christ did the principles in these scriptures are exceeding broad. Psalm 119, verse 96. You have several perspectives, several angles to consider scripture. Look at Matthew 5 and verse 21. Christ did the same. You have heard it said of old time, thou shalt not kill. But remember, those who hate, their brothers, those who have anger towards another without cause. The Bible says you have committed murder without actually doing it literally. Matthew 5 and verse 27 and verse 28 gives us another perspective of the commandments of God. The seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. The principles are there, written in stone, brothers and sisters. Several different applications. Look at this right here. I want everyone to notice this perspective I'm going to give you today. Now consider the book, Great Controversy, page 587. And notice this phrase, the degraded state of morals. I'll read the paragraph. It says, Yet this very class puts forth the claim that the fast-spreading corruption is largely attributable to the desecration of the so-called Christian Sabbath and that the enforcement of Sunday observance would greatly improve the morals of society. Would greatly improve the morals of of society in other words we should expect a moral decline in america and globally all right let that point sink in brothers and sisters now how would you define the term a decline of morals what words would come to your mind what scenes of immorality would come to your mind i'll give you a few seconds now, friends, consider, did the following words and scenes come to your mind? Mass shootings, hmm? social injustice. You could read the words in the red box. A moral decline, idolatry, a moral decline, cursings, swearing, foul language, anarchy. Did these scenes and words come to your mind? Moral decline, riots, bloodshed, stealing, lying, fornication, adultery. Did these scenes and words come to your mind? Rape, drug abuse, 
suicide, alcoholism, the these scenes come to your mind, a moral decline, gangs, hmm? promiscuity, licentiousness, lewdness, wickedness. Did these scenes and words come to your mind? I want to ask you a question. Did climate change come to your mind when you considered the term, the decline of morals? Did climate change come to your mind? Well, take a look at the screen here, brothers and sisters. This is fresh off the press. America Magazine, the Jesuit platform, November 4th, 2021. The papists are now saying the climate crisis is a moral issue. Hmm. You mean the decline of morals is linked to climate change? Take a look at this one paragraph. This is Jose Agutu. Who is he, by the way? The new executive director of the Catholic Climate Covenant. Listen to what this says. Blue words. He writes and states, Our role as Catholics is to elevate the moral call to address the climate crisis beyond politics and economics. A moral call, brothers and sisters. That's what I want you to see here. Look at this as it goes on. The group of individuals with Mr. Agutu sent a letter to President Joe Biden and to Congress on October 27, 2021. Of course, policies to combat climate change. And by the way, how does a nation speak? How does America speak? She speaks to her lawmakers, that's Congress, the legislative branch and the judicial branch. Listen, blue words, the covenant hopes that this expression of national solidarity will prove persuasive to members of Congress and America's Catholic president. The climate crisis is born out of mistreatment of both the gift of creation and of human dignity. Our ecological crisis is fundamentally a moral one. That's it, brothers and sisters. Notice, Jose Agutu continues he hopes for cop 26 do you see what's happening here what's happening now in the uk cop 26 let's read on he hopes for cop 26 closely mirror his aspirations in his new role at the catholic climate covenant they have also partnered with catholic relief services the u.s catholic conference of bishops for what purpose? Red word. To help orchestrate a practical church-based response to the climate crisis. So friends, should we speculate what some of those responses and solutions are going to be? I'm going to tell you with no uncertain terms, no ambiguity. It is an immoral solution. Yes, an immoral solution which is sunderest by law. Look at the red word. Who have they partnered with? Catholic Relief Services. Look at the screen right there, brothers and sisters. Do you remember when Mr. Joe Biden met with the Pope? Who was also integral in this meeting and also prominent presently now at COP26? Red words underlined. The Catholic Relief Services, CRS, what are they promoting? They are promoting earth rest, Sabbath rest, Sunday rest. And they're calling for earth's jubilee in the next seven years, just as what the Pope is calling for. A sabbatical year in the next seven years, beginning in the year 2021. My friends, immoral leaders cloaking the climate crisis as a moral issue. And they are promoting an immoral solution. Sunderest, Sunder worship by law. Huh. 
I'll come back to that. Notice here, my friends, that is your statement again. The fast-spreading corruption, they will say, is largely attributable to the desecration of the so-called Christian Sabbath and that the enforcement of Sunday observance would greatly improve the morals of society. This claim is especially urged where? In the United States of America. That's the point I want you to see, brothers and sisters. And notice, who... Do world leaders, the majority of them, who do they call the man with the greatest moral voice? What epithet, what title do they give to Pope Francis? Hmm? A moral leader. It's right there on the screen, my friends. Notice, again, a second confirmation from the UN Secretary General. A third confirmation from... Mr. Barack Obama, a fourth confirmation from the European leaders, the EU bloc, the EU leaders. The Pope, they say, is the only moral authority. That's it, brothers and sisters. Now notice, in Revelation chapter 16, verse 13 and verse 14, the Bible tells us to expect three unclean spirits like frogs. And they come out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. I'll come back to that. Verse 14. They are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings, prime ministers, chancellors, presidents of the earth, queens, princes, kings, and of the whole world to gather them to battle against Jesus Christ. In the person of his saints. That's what we're seeing here, friends. The beast power, the papacy. The false prophet, apostate, Protestant, America. The dragon power has a, a, a few different applications. Dragon, spiritualism. Dragon, civil leaders. Dragon, also pagan religions. And they're all saying the very same thing. Contextually, they are cloaking, covering, presenting the climate crisis as a moral issue. We know we're living in the last days. I'll prove it. We just saw the papacy. Pope Francis, papist, that's the beast power. Three unclean spirits like frogs come out of their mouth. Look at this now. Here comes the false prophet. Or, should I say, the leader of the false prophet nation, apostate Protestant America. Here comes Mr. Biden. It's, he says, the climate crisis is a moral issue. Look at this, my friends. Take a listen. We can create an environment that raises the standard of living around the world. And this is a moral imperative, but it's also an economic imperative. And notice, this was stated when? At COP26 or to the COP26 climate summit. Calling it what? A moral issue, brothers and sisters. That is what I want you to see. Well, what about the dragon power? Spiritualism. World leaders. False religions. Look at this. Fresh off the press. Just a few moments ago. November 5th, 2021. From AP News. Look at the red box and the words therein. Faith leaders and activists across the world are increasingly joining the fight against climate change driven by a moral imperative. That's it. The three unclean spirits like frogs are here coming out of the mouth of the dragon, the beast, the false prophet. They're all saying the same thing. Let me finish that. A moral imperative to preserve what they see as a divinely given environment for future generations. All right. Look at the bottom paragraph. It mentions Hindu groups, the Sikh groups, Muslims, Buddhists. Look at that, my friends. The blue words, the movement knows no denominational boundaries but shears, red words, but shears as a driving force, a moral imperative 
to preserve the environment, to preserve future generations. They have no focus and emphasis on the fact the second coming of Christ is even at the doors. Ever since man sinned, Adam in the Garden of Eden, the earth and man were put on probation. How long, pastor? The Bible says uh, six days. The Bible says uh, 6,000 years, Second Peter. 6,000 years. That's it, my friends. In connection with creation and the second coming, a day represents a 1,000 years. The Bible says so. Notice here, my friends. Again, I'll read. There's a long history of faith-based leaders, indigenous peoples on the forefront to combat climate change. Red words. Together, he said, they have demonstrated the fight for clean air and water. <laughs> and that all these things show us we're living in a moral and spiritual struggle. Now, friends, watch this statement here. This is another perspective. Look at the blue words. It's a call that Pope Francis has made often. Blue words again. It has been echoed by imams, rabbis, patriarchs, and pastors who share how their faith traditions interpreted the call. My friend, what is echo? What is synonymous to the word echo? If someone says says something and others echo it, what does that mean? Well, look at the statement. All these are religious teachers. Look at Great Controversy, page 590. I'm going to give you the point, then I'll read the surrounding sentences. Look at the red words. They will lament the great wickedness in the world. You mean moral? Yes. Immoral? Yes. They will lament the great immorality in the world. Wickedness. And second, the testimony of religious teachers that the degraded state of morals is caused by the desecration of Sunday. That's the nail in a sure place, brothers and sisters. Let's go back. There it is. Pope Francis made several statements. Blue Bird, imams have echoed, rabbis, patriarchs, pastors have all echoed this and we are told this would be the case, GC 590. They will lament the great wickedness in the world and second the testimony or echo, that's it, echo the words of religious teachers that the degraded state of morals is caused by the desecration of Sunday. Now watch my next perspective. Great will be the indignation excited against all who refuse to accept their testimony. Wait a minute. You mean they are going to persecute God's people? Yes. Who refuse their immoral solutions? I.e. Sunday observance by law to combat climate change? Yes. So my friends, what can we now say? Watch carefully. Immoral leaders cloak the climate crisis as a moral issue. They present, push, promote immoral solutions, even Sunday observance by law. And then they will immorally treat God's remnant who are dissenters of Sunday observance. That's the point. If you miss it, rewind the tape, my friends. How can those who claim climate is a moral issue? They are championing a moral cause. Then God's remnant descenders, dissenters to Sunday worship by law are going to be persecuted by them. How can professed moralists be immoral? Ah, you see the juxtaposition, brothers and sisters. I hope you caught that. I hope you caught that. Just hit rewind. That's it, my friends. Another perspective, it's coming. Another viewpoint, point of view. Different angles, brothers and sisters. Now, yesterday, watch carefully. Yesterday, during midday power search and prophetic insights, I shared the book, Great Controversy, page 588. And this was the fact. 
The Pope is quickly converting politicians, Protestants, and worldlings. And this is a fulfillment of this quote on the screen. Blue word, Papists, Protestants, and worldlings will alike accept the form of godliness without the power. And they will see in this union a grand movement for the conversion. That's the word I'm going to deal with now. The conversion of the world and the ushering in of the long-expected millennium. Convert the world to so-called usher in the long-expected millennium. Let me say, say this. The devil and the Pope don't like that millennium. Because it's after the 1,000 years, then comes fire and brimstone upon them and the unrepentant people. <laughs> so what millennium are they talking about? Watch this carefully. I looked up the term millennium. Millennium, my friends. Millennium. And here is a textbook definition for millennium. The golden age. A thousand years of peace, happiness, serenity. A time of bliss, utopia, paradise, jubilee. My friends, these are all synonymous phrases the Pope has been using. To him, earth is his utopia. There's no, he's trying to actually delay as long as possible the second coming of Christ. Do, does he, do others know? by combating climate change with the immoral solution of Sunday worship by law will actually bring the second coming of Christ and the true millennium? That's what I want you to see, brothers and sisters. And what are we told in GC 588? It's there. The conversion of the whole world to bring in the long-expected millennium. That's it. Is he actively engaged? Yes, he is, my friends. Ecological conversion. There it is. Ecological conversion. Now, what is connected to the Pope's ecological conversion? It is Sunday observance by law. No buy, no sell. That's it. A third confirmation. That's it, brothers and sisters. That's it. A global conversion for the whole world. And what is the Pope's timeline? approximately 10 years and people are now responding to this why so long here's my inquiry are you ready are you prayerfully actively trying to get others ready my friends bear in mind christ is in charge of time not satan not popery not their allies christ that's it brothers and sisters and I want to focus now on conversion. And today is Friday, the sixth day of the week, preparation day. It's on this day, God created man, Genesis 2-7. Later on, man sinned. Ever since man sinned, Christ has been trying to convert, to change. That's it. Mankind, to restore, reform. Mankind into his original image, character, likeness. Now here's my point, friends. True conversion, not the Pope's ecological conversion. That is a counterfeit. That's false. The true conversion, Bible conversion, is essential before we die and or before the final crisis, Luke 22. This is Christ speaking about the coming crisis at the first advent. Verse 31, what did Christ say? Simon, Simon, put your name there. Andrew, Andrew, put your name there. It's time for self-examination. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he might sift you as wheat. That he may sift you as wheat. But oh, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. This is Christ's instruction to us. Lord, give me strength to carry out this instruction. 
It's Christ's prayer for us. Likewise for Peter, Lord, help me to believe you're praying that my faith fail not. What is your response to God today? It's preparation day, brothers and sisters. Now notice, Bible convert, true conversion is necessary before the second coming of Christ. Acts 3 verse 19 says, Repent you therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. At what time? Here it is. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ. That's an instruction. Repent and be converted. Lord, I have no strength to meet this instruction. I cannot repent of myself. Your word says in Acts 5 verse 28 through verse 32. You will grant me conversion and repentance. And today, please, would you give me repentance? Give me conversion. My friends, what is your response? Notice, my friends, the prayer of David about conversion should be my prayer. Should be your prayer. Psalm 51 verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness, according... To, thy to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Create in me a clean heart, O God. That's conversion from creation on the sixth day of the week. That's today. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore conversion unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. And that sinners shall be converted unto thee. Yes, friends, just like Luke 22, when thou art converted, go and strengthen thy brethren. Christ said to Simon Peter, as he's saying to us, Psalm 51, verse 13. And now, when I am converted, when I'm being process, being converted, then I will teach transgressors thy ways. So that they, sinners, can also, shall also be converted unto thee. Sister Henrique says, The song of Psalm 51 is very appropriate for this midday power surge prophetic insights. Meditate upon these words from Fountain View. Listen, create in me a clean heart, O God. Green.